Holmes. Both Mr. Holmes and Mr. Denner were students of mine. <laughs> still have the grade book. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped his class because he was way too difficult for my type of education. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, having a little, uh, little laryngitis issue, let me warn you up front. Uh, my name is Justin Holmes. I'm running on the Think Change ticket. I'm also endorsed by the Green Party and Libertarian Party. I want to ask that we take a moment to think about the nature of expertise in our world, particularly as it applies to law. And I have a specific premise that I'm going to ask you to accept about expertise. And if you accept it, then I'm going to tell you why I think I'm the best candidate for this job. A lot of people, on this campus, we've had a great dialogue lately about the role of credentialism. That is to say, the role of, of the credential, whether or not it really means anything. People think, I think a lot of times, that uh, Jimmy Wales and the Wikipedia movement started this question a couple of years ago. But actually, this has been an important part of our dialogue on liberty since more than 100 years before our founding, before our revolution. John Winthrop, uh, who I've been invoking again and again throughout this campaign, said in the late 1600s, a century before the revolution, and this is a paraphrase, but he said that the difference between hiring someone to build a ship and hiring someone to be a magistrate is that when we hire someone to build a ship, we're contracting him for his knowledge, his expertise, and his skill, and his faith. That is to say that he'll do a good job and do what he agreed to do. When we hire one to be a magistrate, <clears throat> we have to run the risk of his skill and his expertise, but we must hold him all the more accountable in his ability or his willingness to act in good faith. Now, since John Winthrop said those words, we've seen <laughs> you couldn't say we've seen the fruition of them. I mean, we've been through domination and slavery and a lot of wretched things have happened. Now, <clears throat> at this point, I think we have nothing less than a tidal wave of unconstitutional behavior and unconstitutional ideology spreading, fanning out across the nation toward us. <clears throat> the premise that I'm asking you to accept is that right now, Right here today, right here this year, right here at SUNY New Paltz, we're at the twilight of the age of credentialism and the dawn of the information age. And that what we are about to plunge into is an entirely new ontos, an entirely new way of understanding knowledge and human interaction. And I think that in the information age, we have to be willing to do as John Winthrop advised and set aside our addiction to expertise and instead look into when people act in good faith now, if you accept that premise, <clears throat> you realize that the, th the three of us here will all have the same set of laws to read. Some of us might even read the Bill of Rights. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, of course. I'm a computer technician, I'm a parliamentarian. And I think the most accessible, I'm sorry, I think the most important element of our court system is accessibility, transparency, the ability to actually access the court, both physically and ideologically. Thurgood Marshall said that mere access to the court does not by itself ensure a fair process. And I think what we need is more than simply access to the courthouse doors. What we need is a court that represents everything that we can do today regarding accessibility and transparency. So what I intend to do is to build an interactive website that will house all of the court decisions, all of the transcripts up to, up to the extent allowed by law, and even my court notes that is to say the notes that I take every day, every court session as judge, will be published. And you as a plaintiff or as a defendant or as an interested party will be able to see those notes and be able to see how consistent my decisions really are. That's something that probably wasn't really possible 10 years ago, but it's possible now. And it's the kind of example that I think we need to set in new faults. Because without a good example of a functioning, accessible, open court here, we have no hope of holding our institutions of law accountable at the federal level. And that's really the movement that we need to ignite right here, right now. I want to talk very briefly about jurisprudence. Um, because, you know, it's, some, it's something that judicial candidates tend to shy away from. And I worry that when people go into the voting booth to vote for judge, they don't exactly know why they're voting. When you're voting for someone for town board, it's very clear, oh yes, I, I like the environment, or, or oh yes, I really want their tax plan. When you're voting someone for judge, <coughs> I feel like people don't really exactly know why they're passing that vote. 
So in addition to my strong feelings about using technology to really bring about accessibility, I think that our jurisprudence in the information age really needs to harken back to a comment that Thomas Jefferson made about the First Amendment that he probably didn't think was going to be played over and over again, but it has been. And it's that the legitimate authority of government extends only as far as those acts that are injurious to others. I think that is a maxim that he did not intend to be carried out by the legislative bodies. He didn't say the best thing for our laws to, to follow should be, or the best way for our laws to be executed should be. He said the legitimate authority of government. And I think he and our founders expected that the institutions of law were going to hold the other two branches to that, and they haven't done it. So, well, so uh, you know, I hope, I hope then, more than anything, more even than your vote, I hope that you accept that premise, that, that we are entering the information age, and that in the information age, credentialism is going to play much less of a role and a very different role. And if you do accept that premise, I hope that you can see why I'm the best candidate for the job because I intend to use 21st century technology to bring about the ideals of liberty and justice that were fostered in our revolution. Thank you.